Liberty Prime. One of the coolest things about the Fallout franchise. Bear in mind that I am going to be talking about some end game spoilers, at least to do with the Brotherhood of Steel and their grand finale. So if you don't want any major spoilers, turn back now. For those of you who stuck with me, the ending to the Brotherhood of Steel's drama where they destroy the Institute is one of the coolest endings in the game. Watching Liberty Prime stomp around the Commonwealth, throwing nukes and scorching raiders and super mutants with its eye laser is so, so sick. There's just something about a giant robot talking about how much he hates communists that makes me happy as an American. Once you activate Liberty Prime, he makes a beeline for the Institute. Fusion Core, reinitialized. Liberty Prime, full system analysis. All systems, nominal. Weapons, hot. Mission. The destruction of any and all Chinese communists. Probability of Chinese victory. Impossible. Brotherhood, salute! Ad victorium! Proceeding to target coordinates. Freedom him, is the sovereign right of Institute. every American. Democracy is non-negotiable. And on his way, he destroys everyone that gets in his path. When he gets to the Institute, he uses his head laser to blast a hole in the earth. I love what he says about the soil composition here. Obstruction depth, five meters. Opposition, sand, gravel, and communism. <laughs> oh, it's so great. Now, before we get into the details of Liberty Prime as we find him in Fallout 4, we need to go over how Liberty Prime appeared in Fallout 3. That's right, we are introduced to Liberty Prime in Fallout 3. Liberty Prime is a pre-war robot made by the United States Army. It was designed to fight the communist Chinese during the liberation of Anchorage, Alaska. In 2072, the Chinese attacked Alaska and occupied it, and the United States built Liberty Prime to go to Alaska and free it. The problem is that it was never deployed. The United States Army partnered with General Atomics International and Robco Industries to create Liberty Prime. But none of them could figure out how to properly power the giant robot since it consumed so much energy. At the same time that the Liberty Prime project was being researched, the United States military was researching into the T-51B suit of power armor. That research completed first, and so the T-51B suits of power armor were deployed to soldiers in Alaska, and the rest is history. The United States took back Anchorage, Alaska, and power armor went on to become an iconic part of the United States military and hence fallout for itself thereafter. So the military canceled the Liberty Prime project and stored all of its bits and pieces in the Pentagon. Fast forward 200 years, the bombs dropped and Liberty Prime is still in pieces underneath the Pentagon. Now in Fallout 3, the Brotherhood of Steel occupies the Pentagon, which is now called the Citadel. While exploring the Citadel, they discover the parts to Liberty Prime. They piece the thing back together, but they get stuck on the same power consumption problems that the United States military did 200 years before. That's when they recruit Dr. Lee, who manages to solve the problem, making Liberty Prime a functional weapon on the battlefield. Liberty Prime proved to be effective in combat against the Enclave in Fallout 3. The Fallout 3 version of Liberty Prime had two head-mounted energy lasers, which could kill entire groups of Enclave soldiers at once. He throws explosives and spouts off anti-communist propaganda. Awesome. Memorial site recognized. Patriotism subroutines engaged. Honoring the fallen is the duty of every red-blooded American. 
But after two weeks of constant combat and the defeat of the Enclave, the Enclave finally destroyed Liberty Prime with an orbital warhead bombardment from the Enclave-held satellite relay station. It remained in this destroyed state for 10 years because Dr. Madison Lee left the Brotherhood of Steel because she became disillusioned with her work being used in warfare. She joins the Institute and continues with what she thinks is peaceful research there. So fast forward 10 years to the events of Fallout 4, and the Brotherhood of Steel loads the pieces to Liberty Prime aboard the Pridwin and brings the robot to Boston. Proctor Ingram takes you to a locked garage where she has her scribes and engineers working on Liberty Prime. This storage bay full of parts is what's left of Liberty Prime. The Brotherhood used it in the Capital Wasteland as a weapon against the Enclave. It's the most advanced robot the Brotherhood has ever had at its disposal. Unfortunately, Liberty Prime was destroyed in the line of duty. I've spent the better part of the last few years piecing him back together. And if you think that was easy, try rebuilding a Protectron while you're blindfolded. In order to get Liberty Prime fully operational, we're going to need your help. The first problem is his CPU. It's fragile, and every time we try to feed power to it, it blows itself out. Why is the power blowing out his CPU? Liberty Prime has a highly complex power system. A good deal of that system was damaged when he exploded. So I'm working in the dark trying to come up with parts on my own. Before the Brotherhood can get the robot into working order, they've got to re-recruit Madison Lee. So you go to the Institute, you have a chat with Madison Lee, and you encourage her to come back to the Brotherhood. Once she gets back, she learns that the Brotherhood wants her to work on Liberty Prime again, and she refuses. So you have to find a way to convince her. Why won't you help us with Liberty Prime? I originally left the Brotherhood because I was tired of being stepped on and used. First, there was the Water Purification Project, designed to freely benefit the entire Capital Wasteland. Even though the Brotherhood allowed it to be activated, they wanted to control it. But that wasn't enough. They forced me to help design Liberty Prime, turned my work into a weapon of war. I had enough, so I left. It's as simple as that. If you don't work on Prime, I'll have you shot. You son of a bitch. Then, you've got to go find some spare parts scattered around the Commonwealth to get the thing back into working order. Prime suffered some significant damage to his memory core. I wish your people would have been a bit more careful, Proctor. The good news is that the damage isn't irreversible, and I should be able to get the power flowing into his CPU core without overloading. If your people stay out of my way, that is. Especially him. I don't want him anywhere near me while I work. I don't know what you said to piss her off, but I'd steer clear of her if I were you. Maybe I should teach her some manners. That's not necessary. She isn't going to be much good to us if she's lying in a hospital bed. In fact, since things are going so well, we're going to have you start building as electromagnetic actuators. You're acting like I know what those are. Oh, I know you haven't the faintest idea what I'm talking about. I just like watching you squirm. The actuators are what allows Liberty Prime's arms and legs to move. Prime's new limbs are way too heavy for the simple hydraulic pistons he had in the past. We're gonna have to rip those out, construct a brand new system using electromagnets, and install them in his limbs. The only thing we need you to head out and find is a high-powered magnet. So you go to the Milton General Hospital to get a high-powered magnet, then you've got to go to the Mass Fusion Building to get a beryllium agitator, and finally you have to source some ammunition for the giant robot. To that end, you go to the Sentinel site in the Glowing Sea, where the Brotherhood has learned that the United States military kept an unknown number of Mark 28 nuclear bombs. These are nuclear bombs that are somewhere between the size of a mini-nuke and a fully-fledged nuclear warhead. You fight your way through a bunch of ghouls and some crazy children of Adam until you finally find a room filled with hundreds and hundreds of Mark 28 nuclear bombs. With these in tow, you're finally able to get Liberty Prime completely repaired and fully armed. The Brotherhood reprogrammed Liberty Prime to see super mutants, raider enemies, and the Institute as Red Communist China. So as he's killing all of these Institute synths and super mutants, he's talking anti-communist propaganda, which is awesome. Anchorage will be liberated. We will not fear the Red Menace. Defending life, liberty, 
in the pursuit of happiness. American casualties unacceptable. Overkill protocols authorized. Global positioning initialized. Location, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Birthplace of American freedom. Communism is a temporary setback on the road to freedom. I am Liberty Prime. I am America. In combat, Liberty Prime stores his Mark 28 nuclear bombs in a container on his back, and he never runs out, which basically works as a magical bottomless container because he can pull as many Mark 28 nuclear bombs out of there as he wants. The Brotherhood also made some upgrades to Liberty Prime, and they consider this version to be the Mark II version of the robot. He has greater mobility than the Mark I version, relying upon electromagnetic motivators for his limbs. This is why you had to go get the heavy duty magnet. They also changed his eye laser. Instead of two blue lasers, he now has one solid red beam laser. It, like the blue laser, can vaporize anything at a single blast, including super mutant behemoths. They also upgraded its terrain navigation systems. There's a point in the final battle where Liberty Prime comes upon a broken bridge, and instead of getting stuck, he charts a new course through the water. So he is semi-aquatic. Obstruction detected. Overland travel to target. Compromised. Probability of mission hindrance, 32%. Revised stratagem initiated. Aquatic transit protocol activated. Probability of mission hindrance, 0%. Democracy is truth. Communism is death. Anchorage will be liberated. He also appears to be able to make some independent decisions. When he gets to the CIT ruins, he scans the place, trying to find an entrance, only to discover that there's no way in. He therefore concludes, apparently on his own, that the best way in is to bore a giant hole into the ground to access the Institute. Scanning results. Negative. Warning. Subterranean red Chinese compound detected. Obstruction depth. Five meters. Opposition. Sand. Gravel. And communism. Tactical assessment. Breach compound to restore democracy. Embrace democracy or you will be eradicated. Perception impaired. Systems Your destruction is inevitable. Obstruction eliminated. Ground units initiate directive seven, three, nine, five. Engage Destroy all communists. And when all is said and done and the Institute lies in ruins at your feet, Liberty Prime is retired to the Boston airport where he spends his time marching around, talking about how much he hates communism and loves America. As a good robot should. And that, ladies and gents, is the full story of Liberty Prime as we see him in Fallout 4. The Brotherhood has such fun weapons and vehicles. They're such an interesting faction to side with. And activating Liberty Prime is a great moment in the game. What are your thoughts on Liberty Prime? Did you think it was kind of a cop-out for Bethesda to use Liberty Prime as a major plot ending in two games? Or did you think that Liberty Prime is such an iconic member of the Brotherhood of Steel that it was fitting? Let me know in the comments section below. I read all of your comments and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. I release a new video every single day of the week, so be sure to subscribe to find out what I publish tomorrow. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a 
a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to my private Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video. Thank you for watching from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning with a brand new video.